the, the, the victim said, listen, if anything happens to me, Kit Martin's the one you got to tell police to look at Kit Martin. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm wondering, I mean, if you're, to be at that point where you are so scared of someone that you think something can happen and you know who would be responsible, I, I wish there was a way for that person to take some steps to prevent it from happening. Um, but that evidence is coming in. Do you think it's persuasive evidence that the jury will believe these people who come in and say, oh, yeah, the victim told me if anything happened, uh, it was this guy? I think it is going to be helpful to the uh, jury. You know, like you said, we see it in movies, and we hear all the time about things like this, and everyone's thinking, I've got an enemy. And if you know somebody's out to get you, that's what we all would do. We'd say to, to our wife, to our spouse, to our best friend, look, if anything ever happens to me, I want you to know who did it. And we all hope that that would get in front of a jury. Usually it doesn't get in front of a jury. It's interesting that they're letting it in, and I understand the theory. Um, but, yes, I think it's persuasive because – you don't have anything else, right? I mean, your prosecutors, they don't have, like the defense said, there's no DNA, there's no eyewitness. What do you have? You know, dead men don't lie. Dead people don't lie. They spoke the truth, and you have to listen to them. There's something holy and sacred about what people say from the grave or before they died. So uh, I think it's powerful. Well, right, let, let's take a look at that video that you're mentioning, and we've got the video of, of Diana Phillips there at the house. Let's, let's take a look at it. And you, you kind of see her. Now, when you zoom in, you can see in the reflection. If you look in the reflection, you can see her finding it. <clears throat> look at that. The reflection of the door, you actually see her finding the shell casing. Randy Kessel, are you buying it? Do you see her putting the shell casing down and picking it up? Because that's very convenient. I think it's a, I, I, she's believable to me. I think she's believable. But are you going to put someone away for the rest of their life based on that one piece of evidence? That's, that's good corroboration. It's good, you know, circumstantial evidence. But for that to be the linchpin of your case. It's the linchpin. No eyewitnesses. It is. That's a tough one. That's a, you've had stronger linchpins in cases you've tried, Vinny, I know. Uh, professor, Vinny? let me ask you about the polygraph. You know, usually... It's criminal defendants who either refuse or, or don't pass a polygraph. Here's a witness for the prosecution. So all of a sudden, we got defense attorneys jumping up and down saying we should, we should, the polygraph should be in front of the jury, right? Um, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts about what sure. those results really mean? Do, do you trust them? No, I think everybody uh, on this uh, screen today knows polygraphs are subjective. It's based on who the tester is. And if you have five different people testing it, you're not going to get five consistent results. So, you know, there's some subjectivity because it's a human being interpreting the responses and the reactions. But, you know, thinking about that cross-examination, we're all thinking, God, there's so much he could have done. He could have said, aha, you thought, I've got it. I've got the silver bullet. You caught him. You're going to be able to put him away for life. <laughs> but the one thing we learn in law school is you never ask a question that you don't know the answer to because you don't know if she's prepared for that and you don't want to be dramatic and look foolish. So I think he's done the right thing. He didn't have a chance to practice with her because it was not his witness. It was cross-examination. Uh, I think he's doing a good job. All right. We'll see how it plays out. Trial will continue tomorrow. This one's going to take a few weeks. Again, a lot of layers to this whole thing, but not necessarily as much evidence as we see in a lot of other cases here on Court TV. All right, when we come back...